Secretary Raimondo, the $3.5 trillion Build Back Better plan, it represents really a huge generational investment into American families and workers. But it's been kind of frustrating to watch uh, the negotiations so far. Is it frustrating for you to see a couple of Democrats standing in the way of uh, this type of investment? Well, it is certainly frustrating to see um, how much hand-wringing there is over what I consider to be essential investments, investments that we know will improve our economy, get more people back to work, help women. Quite frankly, investments that in some cases, like with child care and pre-K and paid family leave, that every other industrialized nation in the world have already has done. So, you know, it is, it's definitely a little frustrating that it can't happen more quickly. <laughs> Having said that, you know, it's, these are huge investments. It's trillions of dollars. And I'm also, on the one hand, I'm frustrated. On the other hand, I remain optimistic that we will get it done. And, you know, this is just kind of how the legislative process plays out. We have to go through the process and stick with it. Right. They don't call it Sasha's making because it's some organized process that doesn't look like a mess. <laughs> um, they, that, that's the expression because it is a little messy. Um, in terms of what could be cut out of the trillions of dollars, you, you know, you mentioned it's a, a substantial investment, and that is true. But as Democrats start narrowing down what's going to be in the plan or in a framework, are there any provisions that you think they should absolutely not leave out? Well, that, I would say, isn't really my call. You know, I agree with President Biden that uh, everything he put in his plan is essential. That's why he put it in the plan. Having said that, um, I, I, like the president, favor compromising so we get it done. The most important thing now is, to, is for this to get done quickly and for it to be big enough and comprehensive enough to meet the moment. Um, I will say, as you know, and as you and I have talked about, I think the investments in the care economy are really essential. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's not okay that we have such a, a Swiss cheese model of care for our elderly and disabled loved ones. You know, there are millions of people right now on waiting lists trying to get someone to take care of mom or dad in the home. Millions of people, mostly women of color, working full time in poverty, taking care of our elderly and disabled loved ones. So I think that is essential. I've, I've mentioned child care already a few times. You know, there are millions of women not working. They want to work, they can't work because they don't have an affordable, high quality, stable place for child care for their kids. So there's, you know, so many just common sense investments that need to be made in order to allow folks to get back to work and families to have the support they need. I'm so glad that you mentioned uh, the need for investments in home care for our elderly and our disabled communities because that's my life. <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm somebody who has um, an aging parent who requires full-time care, and that is our lived experience every day, but that's not just me. And then you have um, women throughout this economy who are doing both. They have to take care of parents and they have children. Can you speak to the specific ways in which we have to focus in on that and the ways these investments will help those women and those families, as opposed to just the price tag of these bills? Because I think the conversation has been stuck there for far too long. Yeah. By the way, no one's talking about the price tag of not making these investments. The, I would argue the price tag of not making these investments in terms of economic loss and human suffering is far, far greater than the price tag of doing it. Having said that, on the issue you're talking about, women get hurt twice um, by not having a good system of care for our elderly loved ones. First of all, it's, you know, the caregiving of 
mom or dad or grandma and grandpa when they get old falls disproportionately on women. That is just a fact. That means a lot of women give up their jobs to take care of mom. My mom's 90, God bless her. We have an amazing care team who takes care of her. But for that, my sister and I would quit our jobs to take care of my mom. So a lot of women get hurt because they give up their job because they have to take care of a loved one. Secondly, pretty much all of the women who are caregivers, you know, certified nurses assistants, working to take care of elderly loved ones are women. And most of them work full-time in poverty because America doesn't pay a decent wage to these women. They do the back-breaking, life-giving work of feeding and caring for our moms and dads and aunts and uncles, and they get paid 10 bucks an hour. So the president's proposal would make it so that um, wages would go up for the caregivers, there would be more caregivers, and every state in America would have more money so that we could get people off the waiting list and they could get the caregiver they need. So anyway, I think it's good for health care. By the way, health care costs would go down. You want to talk about the price tag? Mm -hmm. Most expensive place you could put mom is a nursing home. Um, and I think wages would go up and it's just, it's just the right thing to do. One of the things that's also come up in, in recent days is Senator Manchin uh, has called for a work requirement for the child tax credit, which, which is another piece of this plan you mentioned. Um, but in, in, in a Washington Post op-ed, uh, there was a point about, I think a lot of people are overlooking, which is that there are a lot of grandparents out there who in this pandemic um, or in, and generally have taken up the role of caregivers and that uh, having there be a work requirement is is harmful to to those grandparents because those grandparents are not a working age they're not going to work um can you speak to the ways in which um the child tax credit benefits parents grandparents anybody taking care of children and how making it permanent which would is is what is being proposed here would be essential and help american families just have a foundation have a solid foundation yeah, I mean, I think you said it. I think you said it. The American people deserve to know that the rug won't be pulled out from under them. As a working mom myself, there's nothing, you know, more stressful than worrying about your kids. Are they being well taken care of when you're at work? It, are they at a child care center which is well-funded and stable and not going to go out of business in a week or two or a month or two? So I think that um, people deserve that, what you just said, stability. Um, every other country has figured out a way to afford it. And oh, by the way, it's, it's so interesting. Every single business person I talk to, literally everyone, from big companies to small companies, is complaining about the worker shortage. Yet, we have millions and millions of talented, skilled women on the sidelines. They can't go back to work because they don't have stable child care. Seems pretty simple to me. Make the investments in child care. It's good for the kids, good for the economy, allows women to go back to work. It's such a good point, and I think it's kind of funny that, you know, the assumption was, like, people are, are lazy, and I just want the women who are watching to know that we know you are not lazy. That is not why you're not going back to work. Um, Secretary Gina Romano makes a really good point about the essential nature of child care. That would allow all these women to go back to work. Yes. Thank you so much um, for being here. Again, as always, it's great to have you. Um, really important conversation. Please stay safe. Hi, I'm Zerlina Maxwell. Thanks for checking out our channel on YouTube. You can see more from Zerlina by clicking any of the videos on this screen and make sure you subscribe below to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. Thanks for watching.